Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Eric Tyson. I'm project coordinator for Region 1 Planning Council. Um, I started here in February and took over uh, project management for the passenger rail conceptual siting analysis, uh, which is the purpose uh, of this community engagement this evening. Um, I am uh, recording the meeting um, and R1 will post uh, the meeting and presentation as soon as we can on our website um, so that it is available. Um, and hopefully everybody will have an opportunity to review it um, and uh, enjoy the information and contemplate the information that is shared here today. Um, I do wanna recognize um, Villa, City of Belvedere staff, uh, Mayor Morris and uh, Planning Director Gina Del Rose um, have joined us. Um, I will turn the microphone over to Mayor Morris here in just a moment. Um, I also want to acknowledge, um, I was pleased to see that uh, Sydney Turner, uh, Director of Regional Planning, was able to join us as well. Um, and uh, the consulting team from Farr and Associates, uh, Doug Farr and Olivia Grenzenbach, are also here um, and will have their opportunity to go into more detail in just a few minutes. Um, so at this particular point, Mayor Morris, I'll stop talking for just a few minutes if you'd um, like um, to provide a few additional welcome comments. Um, by all means, uh, please feel free. The floor is yours for a few minutes. Okay, well, thank you very much, Eric, and uh, thank you, Sydney, as well, and uh, Doug and Olivia with Fire and Associates. Um, as people are aware, uh, the city of Belvedere has contemplated or had a bite at the apple, I guess, in the past with um, passenger rail service here. It goes long before uh, my administration, and uh, I believe it goes back to Mayor Brereton's administration. Um, at that time, the city of Belvedere uh, was hopeful uh, that we would uh, have passenger rail service. I believe that was around 20, 2010, 2012. Uh, and we would have passenger rail service maybe by now, but uh, it seems like, uh, you know, politics change and priorities change. And uh, so we have had, uh, we have had a plan here in the city of Belvedere. Actually, we've had a couple plans. Uh, one of them, the original plan under Mayor Brereton was to have uh, a downtown train uh, depot, a station uh, downtown right next to City Hall. And then after Mayor Brereton and uh, things had changed and it was put on a back burner, it was resurrected uh, most recently. And uh, Mayor Chamberlain uh, had been involved with some negotiations. And uh, I believe that the uh, depot was changed. It was going to be um, out uh, off of Newburgh Road. And, uh, you know, as I took office, um, I believe that uh, the train uh, was intended uh, originally to help our downtown, more foot traffic, help our downtown businesses. And I felt that uh, we're only going to get one opportunity at this and uh, it should be relocated downtown. Now, <clears throat> there will be with Doug with his presentation, he will talk about some of the things that uh, we have discussed with uh, <clears throat> with R1 <clears throat> had been uh, kind of helping us along and uh, Doug had been presenting uh, some of his insight uh, regarding planning and the future, uh, whatever that conception looks like. So I will say that uh, we've tried to open this up and be as transparent as we can with uh, what we have talked about thus far and uh, where we are at uh, here up to this evening. So with that, I'll give it back to you, Eric, and uh, you can go from there. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Morris. Appreciate those comments. Um, before I turn it over to Doug um, and Far Associates for a presentation, I just wanted to provide um, just a short background, um, some of this, uh, some additional 
uh, expansion of this is going to be in Doug's presentation for context. Um, this particular project um, is possible through a statewide planning and research grant from the Illinois Department of Transportation. Um, Region 1 secured uh, that grant funding and submitted um, an RFP request for proposal um, through a uh, lengthy evaluation and submittal review process. Um, Far and Associates was selected as the consultant um, for this particular re uh, Rockford Regional Rail Station conceptual siting analysis, which includes two viable locations for rail stations in the Rockford region. This will support the establishment of Chicago to Rockford intercity rail. Um, this was funded under a 29, 2019 Rebuild Illinois Capital Bill. Um, and um, Doug will go over the project background and where we are thus far with the analysis for Belvedere. Um, this will lead uh, to a follow-up community engagement activity of more depth. Um, in a few weeks, I will um, leave that for the end of Doug's presentation. But with that, Doug, um, I will yield the floor. Um, please remember to unmute, unmute your microphone um, and give you um, some time to go over uh, the project presentation. Um, and then we can address questions and comments afterwards. Um, once again, uh, my intent would be to um, post the recording um, and the presentation of this meeting at some particular point. So with that, Doug, by all means, um, please take it away. Perfect. Thank you, Eric. Can everyone hear me okay? Show of hands. Yep. Great. Thanks, Mayor Morris. Thanks, Gina Del Rose. Uh, thanks uh, to Sydney um, and all the other folks that have joined in today. So what we have is a presentation to uh, record the process that we, FAR Associates, and our consulting team have been engaged with, uh, with the Regional Planning Agency and with uh, Belvedere, uh, the mayor and the staff. Um, and what I, I want to amplify several things that the mayor has already laid out, um, that the Belvedere, City of Belvedere, the R1 Planning Agency, our office are all committed to a transparent process where we um, document each decision step, uh, make sure that the public is briefed on it, uh, can pose questions and answer them and so on. And I think I'm very happy with the process thus far. And I think all of the decisions which you'll, we'll share in a minute and we'll have a chance to answer questions about are good solid decisions. And so there's no need to look over our shoulder and go backwards. Um, and then we will also set the stage for the workshop that Eric mentioned that's coming up in a couple of weeks. So without further ado, Olivia, can you share your screen and let's start the presentation. So um, hopefully everyone can see this. Um, if you can't post a note in the chat, something like that, but I will assume everyone can see it okay. So, um, so this, uh, as Eric said, the study started in 2019, as with so many things in the world, it was delayed uh, due to COVID. Um, but it's a really exciting uh, opportunity for Rockford, Belvedere, and many, many communities in the area to finally get restored rail service that connects to Chicago and eventually, hopefully, to points west. So um, next slide, please. So here's our consultant team, FAR Associates. We are the lead. Our partner in it is the R1 you know, Planning uh, Council. We have three sub-consultants on our team, each of which you'll see sort of evidence of their work in this presentation. S.B. Friedman, which is a noted uh, market analysis firm in Chicago region. Sam Schwartz Engineering, a national consultant in transportation planning, um, TOD planning, transportation development planning, uh, parking consulting, uh, all those kinds of things. And then Jacobs Engineering, which is a massive global engineering outfit, uh, which has expertise in our particular need, which is rail passenger. So uh, you'll see their expertise uh, uh, shortly. Next slide. So um, we have an agenda. There's a number of things, uh, but basically to sort of summarize it, we're going to tell you what happened before. We're going to give you a snapshot of what uh, FAR Associates and our consultant team see are true about Belvedere, downtown Belvedere today. 
We're going to lead you through three sort of big questions about station location, where should the train stop, where should the station be, all those kinds of things. And then we're going to seed a discussion in advance of the upcoming workshop in a couple of weeks to sort of get the gears going in terms of the really fine grain. Now that we've picked a site, what are the other considerations? So, and then we'll end the meeting with questions and comments. So let's continue. So project introduction, here we go. So the, there, uh, this, the history is there's been a desire to extend rail service out you know, Huntley, Belvedere, Rockford. Uh, it's part of a political process, but I think the, uh, to, to Mayor Morris's comment, I think this time it's gonna stick um, and that you know, we might expect rail service in the next several years, certainly within this decade. So, um, but as part of that is, is deciding finally where the stations are, the rail alignments are mostly set, uh, but the station siting is, is a key part of that. So, um, so in our task, you can see the three items here were meant to focus on the rail facilities, station access, how do you get there, uh, you know, by foot, by bike, by car, uh, and then development potential. Because if all we do is build a train station, um, we haven't realized the full potential of this project and the public and public private funding that will, that will make it possible. So let's, let's, let's go next slide. So um, good news is, you know, Belvedere was developed around a train station. Um, it was uh, Chicago Northwestern in the day, you can see in the upper diagram, and if you can move your cursor there, Olivia, um, there was a train station that sat really uh, kind of at the end of, on the north side of the tracks in downtown um, at the terminus of Main Street. So what's interesting, and this was, uh, you know, the photos we have are from the 40s, and I, I don't know that I can give you a date when the train station was removed, uh, but it was there a good long while. What's interesting about this kind of historical moment is to realize that the train station terminated a street, Main Street, which actually has a bridge across the river and was thought sort of important enough to sort of terminate that street. And so it was on a very prominent, uh, prominent uh, location. So the other thing to note is that State Street was a vibrant Main Street in the 40s, as you can see here for the area. Olivia, if you can move your cursor to show people where that is. Um, but that the street just that parallels State Street, Whitney Boulevard there was open. And so you'll hear more from us in a few minutes about just what makes a healthy Main Street. And State Street, you know, has good bones. Uh, and we want to make sure we help it and don't do anything to, to uh, you know, increase its, increase its chances of, you know, robust viability. So next slide, please. So here's a photograph if those of you who are old enough uh, uh, on this call uh, may remember these pictures, but this is what the, the Belvedere train station looked like. It was a grand traditional station. It had a generous overhanging uh, waiting, uh, you know, platform. You can, you know, wait, wait in the rain for a train to come uh, and so on. And there was, you know, enough amenity, bathrooms, ticketing agent, you know, those kinds of things uh, to make it a real sort of substantial uh, facility. So next slide. Um, so uh, let's see where we go. So um, there, uh, so that was the station, it was removed. Um, Belvedere has done a number of plans over the years. And so each plan should start responsibly by looking at the prior plans, what the decisions were that were made at the time and how those hold up over time. Uh, and also to look at the kind of whole archeology span of all of the plans um, at one time. So that's what we're gonna lead you through. So in 2005, there was a planning study done to imagine where the station would go and how the station would foster development in and around it. And so um, you can see here, 2005, the Multimodal Transit Center uh, study proposed that the station be located between Maine and Whitney, excuse me, and you can see the cursor there, and that uh, the Civic Campus, the Museum and City Hall were immediately to its west as, as exists today. There was, uh, you know, proposed uh, development, the sort of purple zones around it uh, were all sort of contemplated as, as things that would happen in conjunction or in the years following the, the opening of the uh, renewed rail service. Then if you can look at the top of the circle there, the Kishwaukee River Brownfield redevelopment area, I think it's hard as a planner to look at downtown 
uh, Belvedere and not notice that there really is a river edge opportunity that isn't realizing its full potential. So a 2005 study um, left all of the streets open um, for the station in a mid-block location. I was not, uh, was not specific enough in terms of a rail study to know whether the, the rail operations would be operated by Metra or Amtrak or third party. So we're gonna add that level of detail, but here's the 2005 study. Next slide, please. Um, shows, sort of dials in at a greater level of detail here. You can see again, Whitney Boulevard, uh, if you can show where the train station there is, uh, right there it is. So between uh, Whitney and Main Street, um, all the streets remain open. State Street can thrive and function. Um, there's an expanded park to the west of the museum there uh, along State Street and so on. So uh, many good lessons. Uh, this was, I think, a very solid plan for 2005. Next slide. So the next study that was done was done in 2010. Um, that study was done by a planning firm. This study was done by an architectural firm. And it was an assignment to actually design a station and the parking around it to fit somewhere in the downtown. And so um, you can see just the elements of this slide. On the upper left is the actual architectural plan for the station. You can see there's um, you know, kiosk, bathrooms, waiting area, a museum store, a couple of retail stalls and so on. And very much a, a mindful recreation of the train station that was here in Belvedere historically. And so it's a, it's a really nice design. Um, so of the building. And then, and then the architect uh, made a decision to place the building in a way that closed off Whitney Street. And so that is a, a kind of a, a big change from 2005 where the streets were, were uh, still continuous and open and through. So but anyway, there you have the, uh, uh, the design from 2010. Um, and adjacent parking in the lower left is sort of hard to read, but there's a building and you know, a series of parking lots. And it is important to have some uh, passenger uh, uh, you know, rider parking uh, to support the rail. Next. Okay, so, um, so, so that's the history of planning. Let's now take a snapshot and look at downtown Belvedere today. So SB Friedman um, you know, helped us with this. And so uh, we start with a look at the land uses because uh, tra rail and transit connections um, are long-term investments and they often, in fact, every time drive the land use around a proposed train station. So as you might imagine, a train station can support some retail businesses. The good news is downtown Belvedere already has State Street that it's hoping to strengthen with the location of the, of the transit, but other new businesses may support. Also, it can support housing development where um, uh, folks that might want to live in Belvedere can ride the train to other, you know, other cities and other locations. And so, um, you know, but here's the start, start of the map and you can see where the kind of the box there at the middle, Olivia, if you can put your cursor on it, um, kind of locates the proposed train station just east of State Street. And it's in a kind of straddles a line between some commercial uses along the State Street corridor and then residential uses in the surrounding area. Next slide. So um, here's downtown Belvedere. Um, it, you know, good news. It's a walkable main street. It's got a lot of great history, um, traditional buildings um, in various states of renovation and rejuvenation. Uh, there's a lot of vibrant businesses in the downtown. So we want to build on this asset and um, and strengthen it and enhance it. And so a couple things in that, um, in the subtitle there, the space in a retail, serving retail space in a walkable format. So this is a distinction between how much development, how a lot of development has gone on in the United States, which is car oriented development, where there's a building behind a parking lot, think of a, you know, a Costco or a Walmart or a strip mall. Um, so downtown and Main Street formats are different. The buildings face the street and the parking is tucked around behind or on the side street or whatever. So um, this is a recognition that this is the physical asset we have. And so the, the goal is to have infill and rejuvenation, you know, occur that enhances this walkable urban form. Well, next slide. So um, how do folks get around? Um, guess what, most everybody, this is pre-COVID, uh, pre pre-pandemic numbers, but I, I don't know if they've changed much. 80% um, of people that get in and around Belvedere Drive 
by themselves in a car. So carpooling is a big chunk. And so at 94%, people are you know, traveling by cars. Some people work from home, people take the bus, walk, bike, other, I'm not sure this adds up to 100%, but it's awfully close. So, but mostly people are driving. So, um, you know, down walkable downtowns also support some uh, walking and biking and so on. It can be a stretch for people to not live with the car, but it will certainly reduce the need to, to rely on that car. So next slide. Um, so uh, the other good thing is a street grid, which, you know, seems so basic and seems maybe so kind of ancient or historic is a really good thing. And so a street grid is the most, uh, this may seem crazy, but when you think about what, what environment will people willingly walk in, a street grid is the best. And the reason for it is, um, you know, the, the cars are put in their place, uh, like the upper left image there, the cars stay in the, you know, the street, there's a curb that makes sure they don't jump off the curb. There's uh, street trees, there's a sidewalk that's buffered from the cars. And so uh, pedestrians are safely considered, ideally bicycles are accommodated in the same uh, public right-of-way section and so on. So anyway, you have uh, Belvedere has good bones, the best bones in a street grid that has continuous sidewalk networks and so on. I think there's an opportunity to enhance it uh, to accommodate bike infrastructure and so on. But anyway, we start with a good place. We have a street grid next. So, and then bicycles, as I mentioned a minute ago, um, Belvedere has increasing quantities of um, bike infrastructure, trails along the river, uh, designated bike lanes, and shared lanes on public streets. And so we are excited that the proposed station location is able to connect to a lot of these amenities so that we can add bicycling to walking and driving as ways to get to and from uh, the downtown and the future rail station. Next. Okay, and so a lot of text here, but um, I will just say we don't boil it down to about the single best thing you could do to help um, uh, State Street businesses is to add rooftops. And this hardly comes as a surprise. If you have more people willing to spend money at a set you know, number of businesses and so on, that only helps the bottom line. So um, the role of rail transit in, in helping those, you know, provide those rooftops is it's yet another anchor to downtown, you know, within downtown uh, Belvedere that uh, adds to the reason, you know, answers the question, why should I be in Belvedere? Why should I move to Belvedere? Why should I live in Belvedere? So the rail station and the planning around it will, um, you know, point to opportunities to add the, the housing that adds rooftops and purchasing power for downtown businesses. So next slide. Okay, so um, we want to go, this next one is um, really focus on three questions and maybe next slide if you can, Olivia. You know, the siting of a rail station is not a trivial thing. And we've seen communities across the country that mostly get it right and occasionally get it wrong. And get it wrong can be, you know, degrees of wrong. So anyway, we're working very hard with, with the mayor and his, his team to get it right. And I think what we're about to show you gets everything right. So the first thing is um, in terms of the station itself. So Amtrak publishes um, a guide that's sort of summarized here in this chart. That, that says, you know, you should have some minimum station or rail facilities at a inner city rail stop. And they say, based on your ridership, if we just did that and based it on its ridership, we would not uh, uh, have uh, the station that is proposed by Belvedere, which I think is the right thing. So Amtrak guidance would say, we do a caretaker station, which is the column to the right of the your big red box here. And you can see there's a lot of blue dots that are not filled in on that column. So what, what I think Belvedere has proposed in the station design from 2010 is a very good thing, which is to upgrade from the minimum Amtrak guidance into what's called a medium station. Their name, it's not a great name, but medium station. And it comes with these amenities that are listed here on the left. Ticket booth, vending machine, waiting room, bathrooms, kiosk, uh, display system, and so on. And so, uh, in fact, the 2010 scheme also had some retail uses in it, and so uh, all the better. But anyway, so it's a good decision. We've got a highly amenitized uh, medium-sized station next. 
So, and then here's kind of in the weeds, but just so you know, um, the rail passenger um, service, who will actually be the operator? What government entity will own and run the trains has yet to be decided. So at this early planning stage, we have to plan for, it's the two nominees are Amtrak or Metro, and they have really different station characteristics. So Amtrak, um, uh, have run shorter trains. You can see at the bottom are kind of the length of the two kind of prototypical trains are like 400, 470 feet long. Um, and so they're shorter and that is a little 450 feet, let's say is a little more than one city block. They also require a 48, 48 inch high platform. So like the picture on the right, you can see you step right from the platform into the rail car. You're not climbing steps and so on. So that's what Amtrak uh, is about, shorter trains and taller platforms. Next. Um, by contrast, Metra is a, is a different animal altogether. You can see, uh, if you read the fine print on the bottom, um, you know, the trains are about twice as long, even longer than an Amtrak train. So if a Metro train pulls up in your downtown, it is two to three city blocks. And so when the train is sitting there, it will uh, block more than one street. And so, but in this case, it's sort of simpler in some ways because it's just an eight inch high platform. So you can see it's kind of apples and oranges or lemons, whatever you want to say, these two things. So our plans uh, accommodate either Metro or Amtrak and work either way. So just so you know, and you know, to fo following along at home, this is the thought that goes into it. Next. Okay, so um, these are the three questions we're, we have, we're going to sort of document what the decisions were, what the choices were, and where we settled in. So first one, uh, Mayor Morris referenced, which was should the station be downtown or on the edge of town. Second one is east or west of State Street. We'll show you that in a minute. And then um, third one is a question about should it be tight on uh, State Street or somewhat further to the east uh, embedded in the neighborhood and closer to potential development. Next slide, please. <coughs> so downtown or out of town, next slide. So here, one, one second. Here you can see a sort of zoomed out uh, drawing that shows downtown Belvedere, if you can show in your cursor, um, Olivia, <coughs> excuse me, the two dots. So there's a downtown dot, that's the eastern dot, the red one there, that is really the kind of economic development uh, option that the mayor referenced. And then there's the uh, dot sort of out on the tollway, <coughs> which is, uh, was uh, recommended when Mayor Morris came into office the plan was to put the station out on the edge of town. And, and the reason you would do that, you say that's crazy. It's not crazy if your goal is to get ridership. And so putting the train station visible, visible from the tollway with a large parking lot, you know, is, is a credible option if your goal is to get drivers off the tollway and onto an Amtrak station. But if your goal is economic development and downtown enhancement, um, the Eastern dot is the one you want. And so early on with working with Mayor, Mayor Morris and his staff, the decision was made to abandon the tollway location in favor of the downtown location. So excellent decision, but I just, I don't know that this has been publicly discussed to date. So there you have it. So in downtown, next, next question. East or west of State Street. So this will, um, uh, we can go to the next slide. So as I mentioned, Jacobs Engineering is our consultant and they are super experts at rail passenger. And one of the great things about this project is the ability to turn over stones that maybe weren't considered earlier. So our consultant at Jacobs identified a location to the west of State Street. You can see it here, the top, top map shows Amtrak platform options and the bottom is Metro. There are 10, he identified 10 different places that an Amtrak platform could go east or west of State Street and on the bottom drawing three different places a Metro platform could go. But nobody had thought of uh, that sort of location west of State Street for either of these scenarios. So his expertise revealed this opportunity and uh, because he brought it forward, we felt responsible to bring it you know, to the mayor and to the to staff and the planning agency to consider this. So we looked at options both east and west of State Street 
And the decision was, next slide, I think, is that right? We um, uh, went, uh, did not pursue the option to put the, the platform to the west of State Street as shown on the top drawing and did uh, kind of go whole, sort of stick with what we had before the east of State Street. And the reason was the development potential around the upper uh, platform location, if you can point to it, Olivia, was fairly limited. You all know this uh, patch of town better than I do. It's fairly hilly. Yes, you could technically get a platform there, but there really isn't any economic development potential to speak of but there is uh, east of State Street. So um, west was rejected, east was accepted, and so here we are. So we're downtown and we're east of State Street. So next question. So we there's a choice where you'll see in a minute, should we be tight on State Street or embedded in the neighborhood with access to other development potential? Next slide. So this um, drawing shows you again, another version of downtown Belvedere, um, the block on the left, there are some animations that go with this, is that right? So, okay, so the, can you animate? So the State Street corridor is one area of particular economic development interest, and this is as a walkable main street. So it exists, the bones are there, um, but there's opportunities to enhance it, to infill on vacant lots and so on. And then questions about how best to connect a transit station and the ridership and traffic that it will generate with this existing uh, you know, commercial asset. Then the second thing, the second box is up along the river. And this was identified back in that 2005 study, if you remember, as the Brownfield development. Well, so good news, I think a lot has been done since 2005 to pursue the cleaning up of that site. And so um, when the market analyst says, please add as many rooftops as you can because it will help the businesses on State Street, we have our eyes on that riverfront site as a possible place to do that. So a lot of people would say, well, that's silly because it's in the floodplain and you can't, you can't do that or that it's only going to make flooding worse. And so we'll, uh, we have some images to share that basically say it's possible. There's actually great examples around the country where river edge and, walk and flooding area parks have been developed and that they reduce flooding risk. And then the remainder of the site is available for higher, more compact development that adds the rooftop. So new development could mean new development equals reduced flood risk. So we're excited about that. So, so now with that sort of setup, you can see um, you might want to have the station close to State Street because um, State Street's the only game in town. Or you might say, well, maybe a little further east uh, in case uh, that kind of uh, block along the river uh, is a real thing. So next slide. So we looked at um, sort of the focus on the blue stars, if you can. So one is located on Caswell Street. Um, and that was sort of positioned that blue dot there is directly below that sort of riverfront, you know, development site. Uh, or uh, further to the west on Whitney Street. So, and Whitney is one block from state and Caswell is three blocks from state. And so after a fair amount of, uh, you know, spirited debate and, and thanks for the, th the thought behind it. Um, yes, we uh, favored the station closer to State Street as being a kind of obvious immediate benefit to the shops and institutions along State Street. So, so closer to state rather than further from state. So, so that's kind of where we are. So downtown, east of state, close to state. So, um, and we're kind of a block west of, or a block and a half west of where the historic train station was. One block west, because it was on Main Street. So, so that's kind of the decisions to date, the reasons for them. Uh, they're all good decisions. There's no reason to rethink any of them. But with this blue dot in the lower, uh, diagram there, there's still some, some, some opportunities to really make the connections to a walkable Main Street and to contemplate what, how we can add rooftops and how we can add rooftops in a way that might just help with flooding. So next slide. So here's our decisions. We've talked about it. Downtown, east of state, adjacent to state. Next slide. So, so next steps are we have a community workshop on October 5th. 
and it is in going to be in City Hall and it's going to be in the evening and Eric can maybe when we're done here can add some detail about how that's all going to go. But uh, what we wanted to do was to just on the River Edge stuff wanted to share these two case studies, uh, one from a, you know, a town, you know, maybe comparable in size, maybe a little bigger than, than Rockford, and certainly bigger than Belvedere. Fort Wayne, Indiana has a beautiful River Edge Park that does multiple things. It does flood control, it's an event space and so on. And, uh, and so it's a beautiful amenity. So wanted to point that one out. Um, in Atlanta, Georgia, there's the Rodney Cook uh, Park and this was an area that really was subjected to flooding and the park was designed to address the flooding and freed up for development of uh, some many surrounding acres. And so the park uh, was a public investment and spurred hundreds and hundreds of private uh, uh, housing units being developed today uh, in Atlanta. So, so those are kind of exciting opportunities. We, those are ideas we'd like to explore at the workshop. Next slide. So um, yeah, here's kind of more uh, questions like, you know, how, how can we connect the, a dot on a map to an existing Main Street? Leave it at that, next slide. So, um, you know, healthy Main Street, let's talk about it. So um, this is, these are slides we wanted to include to sort of seed the conversation for the upcoming workshop. So, um, and to think about um, Main Street, a Main Street, it's not, you know, yours is called State Street, but it is a Main Street. And that's buildings that face the common street. Um, they're mixed use, they're one, two or three stories tall. The parking is sort of tucked around in the back and so on. So anyway, so here's, um, a, on the left is a diagram that says, what makes for a healthy Main Street? People like to walk along a continuous Main Street. So if there's a missing building or a parking lot in the mid block or a blank wall, um, study after study shows people just won't walk. And so the red here, we've sort of colored in everything, maybe too much, um, but the parts of it that are along State Street are the most important where there are gaps in that sort of continuous walkable fabric. And I should say that a park, uh, as you have there on, can you put the dot on it, um, a little north of there, I think north of the tracks on the east side of state is also a very nice pedestrian amenity, something people would willingly walk next to. So, so thinking about um, State Street as a main street type and how you can make it better. Second thing is um, because not all the parking for the establishments on a main street can happen on the main street itself that you need more parking than that. That's on the side streets and oftentimes in surface parking lots behind the main building. It's important to have ready access to a parallel street to allow that kind of continuous driver access to the parking behind buildings. And so that green line you see there on Whitney Street, thank you, uh, Olivia. Whitney Street is an important thing that is part of a healthy Main Street. So the value of keeping that open um, is a kind of proven rule in planning. We haven't decided yet if that's what we're gonna do, but we're gonna, as planners, we're gonna advise the town to say, don't close that lightly, realize that it's part of a healthy Main Street. And then the third thing is, you know, within business, for a business district like State Street, you really want to have um, as many people living within a short walk of your business as possible. And so, you know, it's, it's really simple stuff. Like if you have a restaurant and, you know, you know, you're open for dinner on Tuesday night, if there's a couple hundred more families within a five or 10 minute walk of where you are, you're going to get more customers. It's really simple. And so, um, you know, building up those rooftops will absolutely help um, uh, state street businesses. Next slide. So, uh, so that's kind of the setup for, um, you know, a couple weeks out and uh, I've talked an awful lot. And uh, so maybe we can, uh, I'll pause and Eric, you want to be the person to uh, facilitate uh, questions that may come up the chat and so on. I see there's some, somebody's posted something in the chat. I'm not sure what it is. So, just Eric. Oh, just Eric, okay. okay. Yeah, that, was, <clears throat> that was me, Doug, thank you very much. Um, for that um, summary overview um, and the opportunity to address next steps. Um, at this particular point, while I don't see any um, immediate follow-up um, based on this particular presentation, if anyone um, does have any questions, 
um, please feel free um, to raise your hand um, via the Zoom feature. Um, and we can certainly um, make every effort to address um, those questions um, as best we can at this particular point. Um, we do have plenty of time available if needed. Um, so again, if there are any immediate questions based on the presentation, um, please, um, please feel free to raise your hand so that you can be recognized um, or place it into the chat. Um, we'll give everybody a, a minute or two to think about it. Um, don't be shy. Um, if you're thinking about a question, uh, it's quite possible that somebody else might be thinking the very same thing. So <clears throat> um, I see we have a, a question from uh, Eva, I believe. Um, Eva, go ahead and make sure you unmute yourself. And uh, by all means, please ask, what, please ask your question. Thanks, Eric. Can you hear me? Yes, Eva, you are good. Go right ahead. Okay. It sounds like this very exciting plan, everything is decided except whether it's Amtrak or Metra. Is that the case or is more of this still in question? Um, Eva, that's a very good question. And, and the answer is um, there's a general consensus on the location. Um, Doug, I'm going to yield to you. Um, the, the next meeting in October, which will take place in person uh, in the city of Belvedere, we'll need to gather some more information. Maybe now is a good time um, based on this question to try and um, assess or provides a little bit of information on what will, what will be required as far as additional feedback. Sure, yeah, thanks Eric. And Eva, right? Is that, did I get your name right, Eva? Yeah. Sorry, so, yeah, I, I muted myself again. No, that's great, thank you. So uh, great question. So. Um, as we said, those I think those are really strong recommendations, and I, I, you know, I think we've been transparent. We've kind of done our research, studied the alternatives, so I think those are good recommendations. Um, but there is work to be done, and so simply locating a train station near a main street and hoping for the best uh, is not a plan for a recipe for success. So there is a need to really look at what the pedestrian connections are between the station and to State Street to make State Street healthy, even if the rail you know, weren't there, the State Street has some, some things it can do to better itself. So that's part of what we'll be looking at at the workshop. And then the other part, as I said, is the kind of uh, box there at the top of the screen. Um, you know, is that a candidate for where we could add some rooftops? And is there a way to do it as other cities have that have a park plus development and that the park reduces the risk of flooding for everybody. So, so those are the two things we're gonna be kind of doing design studies on uh, that day. Um, the schedule has not been published, but we'll typically have a workshop uh, during the day um, and then a summary event at, in the evening, kind of like this, kind of here's what we studied, here's what we found, um, you know, what do you think? And the Eva, uh, if I might, Eric. By all means, Mayor Morris, go right ahead. Thank you. And Eva, the other part of that was um, your question regarding who the operator was going to be, whether it was going to be Amtrak versus Metro. Um, I was hoping that we would have an answer to that question as well, uh, but we do not as of yet. Eric or Doug may know more information about that than I do, but I do think um, you're right. That's a, that's a pivotal question to get answered regarding uh, which will be the operator for some of the reasons that Doug had made in his presentation regarding the different um, the different uh, criteria for the trains, uh, for the passenger trains, and um, you know how that fits into uh, the footprint that we had we have chosen. So but uh, that's probably a little bit out of our control. Hopefully, uh, in answer to your question, it will be forthcoming shortly, I hope. Th thank you, Mayor Morris. I think that's about as um, concise an answer as we could um, provide. Um, while we'd love to be able to tell everybody, um, unfortunately, we just don't have 
specific confirmation on that just yet. Um, as soon as it becomes available, uh, I will communicate that to the city of Belvedere and um, the consulting team. Um, that will help them refine their plan as they continue to complete their work here. Are there um, any additional questions from those in attendance? Um, remember, as I said, um, if you're thinking of a question, it's entirely possible somebody else is thinking of it too. Um, so please don't hesitate to ask. We we do have um, quite a quite a bit of time allotted for this if needed. Um, we'll uh, we'll give it that um, awkward pause, um, and it it doesn't seem. Uh, that there are any additional follow-up questions um, at this particular point. Um, my uh, email address um, is certainly available for comments um, through the end of the month. Um, Olivia, can you go to the last slide? Perfect. Thank you. Um, as I said, um, the intent is to have the presentation available on the R1 website. Um, I will do everything I can to get a link to the city of Belvedere to make it easy for them to provide a link on their website. Um, comments can be sent to me um, at the email address on that last slide. I will make sure to forward those to the consulting team for their consideration as they continue to refine their proposal. Um, at, at this particular point, um, even though we do have plenty of time left, uh, Mayor Morris, I'll throw it back to you if, if you'd like to provide any uh, closing remarks before we end the meeting. Um, please feel free um, to take the floor for just a few minutes here. Okay. Well, thank you, Eric and, uh, and Sydney and Doug and Olivia. You know, it has been, uh, everybody uh, thinks that they have all the answers, I guess, and until you explore some of the possibilities that you may not have thought about um, that I guess uh, you really haven't done your due diligence. I do believe that Doug did challenge the city uh, regarding, uh, and that's his job, regarding uh, making sure that as he said, uh, you're gonna get one shot at this and you wanna make sure you get it right. Uh, the city, at least from the way I looked at it, uh, when I come into office is that you know, we have a business community downtown and many, many times over the years, uh, I've heard them say, um, you know, um, how can, how can, how can the city help? How can, how can you help, uh, the, you know, with foot traffic? How can you help, help us so that we're successful? There's not a lot of chances that the uh, community that uh, city hall gets to be able to make a difference uh, with the business community and our downtown destination. And in that, in this case, um, I believe that we have made a decision that, um, you know, that takes into account our business, uh, our business, uh, businesses, our, actually our business future. Uh, so we've done everything that I think uh, we need to do. I think you, you help your businesses by increasing, giving them increased opportunity. And that opportunity, I think Doug had mentioned, you know, if you have rooftops where you increase the population around your downtown, that's good. You put a train, uh, you put a depot, a train stop, whatever they're offering it, uh, you know, you put it in a pivotal spot so that it serves your downtown and your businesses and your community, and it can be a thriving point uh, of your community. So many of the other communities that we see east of here, uh, when you look at uh, where are their stations located at, well, they're located at, in their downtown. Not all of them, but a lot of them, and there's a reason for that. And uh, when my administration had taken office here, we believe that this was an opportunity that um, we would be able to help our downtown, help ourselves, and help our community and our business community as well. And uh, I appreciate Eric. Uh, for you know, keeping keeping us on track, and Doug and his staff for making sure that uh, we challenged whatever decisions we made to be uh, looked at 
and uh, that they were in fact what we thought was correct. So I'm optimistic. Uh, you know, we have to be an optimist. I think we look at some of the some of the previous hopes that we had for um, our passenger rail here, and uh, they have not come to fruition. I do believe that uh, we may be further along than uh, at any other time, and I am op optimistic and I'm hopeful. So with that, Eric, that's all really I have to say, and I thank you for your time. Very good, Mayor Morris. Thank you. Um, I, I want to thank uh, Doug and Olivia from FAR Associates um, for their uh, assistance and work on this project. Uh, Mayor Morris and your staff, um, thank you for your uh, continued input and patience. I, I know I've had to schedule a lot of meetings and um, there will be some more. Um, so we'll prepare for those as they come. Um, with that, um, this concludes um, our initial public engagement um, for the passenger rail siting analysis specific to the city of Belvedere. Um, please check the R1 Planning Council website, um, which I posted in the chat, um, r1planning.org. Uh, it is the number one, not the number one spelled out. R1 is in the number planning.org. Um, I will make every effort to have the presentation and the recording of the um, uh, workshop here posted uh, within the next um, seven to 10 business days at the very latest. Um, I will forward a copy of that link to the city of Belvedere. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you, Mayor Morris and the city of Belvedere. And thank you, Doug uh, and Olivia with Farm Associates. Everyone have a great evening.